Hey guys, welcome back to THM. I'm Rick, the Honest Mechanic, and today I got something special for you because we're going to be changing out the carburetor in Suzy. And if you guys are new to the channel, yes, this is our lovely 1978 Glendale Motorhome. We nicknamed Suzy. And the reason we're changing the carburetor today is because, well, I've rebuilt the carburetor a couple times now, and unfortunately, I snapped one of the pilot screws, so it's no longer adjustable and Susie could stand to run a little bit better than she is already. So we're hoping, or I'm hoping I should say, that buying an Amazon Chinese carb is gonna solve the problem. So we've got a bit of a cloudy day actually. It's starting to rain a little bit and I thought that was gonna be a problem until I opened the hood to figure out how I'm gonna attack this and then it suddenly came to me that the bulk of the work, if not all of the work, is gonna be done inside after removing the doghouse so that's going to be good that that means i'm going to stay dry now the other thing that i want to show you guys is this box behind me and that is the carburetor so what susie has currently as a carburetor which i don't think is original but it's a four barrel quadrajet carburetor it's also known as a quadra junk all over the internet a lot of people don't like that carburetor i happen to think it's not bad for the application if you're trying to hot rod something, maybe that's not the application to be using a quad quadrajet, or at least there's a lot more work to be done on those. Uh, and because the quadrajet is a spread bore versus what I just purchased being a square bore, yeah, and I had to research all of that too, I had to get an adapter plate, and I got this from Edelbrock. I'm not sponsored by anybody by any chance, so but I'm open to sponsors if you guys are listening. So let's get right inside, let's start tearing into it, and let me show you what this carburetor looks like. It's actually pretty decent looking. All right, so I've made it back inside just in time because it actually started raining and the box actually is a little bit wet, but not a big deal. And I think it may have lied as well when I said I got it from Amazon because I think it might have been from eBay. I'd have to check all my invoices, but... I don't remember 100%. Either way, it is still a Chinesium carburetor. Uh, and, oh, look at this. It actually comes with some fancy instructions, all laminated, so that's kind of neat. What do we have here? We, go. we got some hardware, extra jets, so I guess if you wanted to run it leaner or richer, so hopefully it's not going to be too much work to get it to run the way I want it to. And then, of course... We've got the carburetor itself, which I have to admit, looks pretty good. Um, so this is supposed to be a knockoff of the Edelbrock 1405 manual choke. Uh, I decided to go manual choke because I have been having so many issues, particularly with this machine when it comes to automatic chokes. And the reason for that is because sometimes when I'm setting it up, to you know level it out or whatever I don't run it until the engine is warm or I do run it till the engine is warm and the choke is either fully open but it needs choke and it takes a while for it to close again it's just I know how to use a choke I just rather do it myself and some other paperwork here which is oh so it's like a little solutions sheet Carburetor troubleshooting, yeah. This could be handy to some of us who don't, I'll probably end up using this, I won't lie to you. So I'm gonna keep this very close, but let's start by removing the doghouse and getting to the carburetor that's in there already. All right guys, and here it is. This is our Quadrajet carburetor that comes, well, with this machine. I, I don't think it's original, but um, at the very least, we're gonna replace it with something newer, but like I was saying, not exactly made by, or designed by GM. These Quadrajets were designed by GM, so they, were, they worked really well with these 350s. Um, so we're just going to simply start by removing a couple of things. So you need to start by removing your throttle cable 
and this is by no means guys a how-to video this is just kind of like if you're interested in purchasing one of these chinesium carburetors for yourself how it's going to run so that's what i'm hoping to do with this video and i hope that uh i'm doing everything i can for lighting because it's kind of dark and dingy in here um hopefully the camera can pick up on what i'm doing but so we got the throttle disconnected we got a couple of linkage springs here those are going to get disconnected as well and hopefully all of the rest of the linkages from the new carburetor are just going to simply bolt right up so then we have on this side the power for my electric choke which i may have to do something with i think i'm going to disconnect this as well just to get this out of the way and it only goes in one hole so i know where it goes and this hopefully will give you a little bit more lighting if i do maybe something like this yeah i don't know i don't know guys i could definitely use some brighter lights and simply all we're going to have in this application is four half inch bolts so i'm going to get to those hopefully with a wrench or a socket now those weren't on very tight and i remember putting those on so it's possible that they loosened up and that can cause runnability issues as well because if the carburetor is sucking air it's not a good thing but i don't think they were that loose the other bolts are on top here so you can still get to them from inside and stay dry those four bolts loose this thing should be loose as well as you can tell it's just coming out right like that so it's not a very difficult job uh, what I am going to go do though is I am going to go get a crescent wrench or let's see uh, yeah I'm going to get a couple of wrench sizes to take this fuel line out all right put your guesses down there what size do you think it is I brought a 5 8 11 16 and 3 quarters. I think it's 11 16 And I was wrong. So I'm happy I also brought a 5 8 Because that's what it was. Maybe I should have cracked this when it was bolted up. Oh, that's good. Oh no, it's coming loose from... Well, you know what? If I take a look at the other carburetor... Maybe I don't need to remove it there. Maybe it's already got a big... Where did they put the carburetor? So if I take a look at this thing, where is the fuel going in? Must be... Yeah, looks like it's coming in right here. So I just need a flat screwdriver and then just get rid of that line. Okay. Let's get that. Oh, I have that right here. A little bit less editing. No, I'm going to try and be careful here because there probably will be a little bit of fuel here. However, I haven't run this engine in probably three weeks. So, I haven't even turned the key. Been pretty busy with different projects. Went on holidays. That was fun. Yep, dry as a bone. So, that's nice because it didn't make a mess. So this carburetor, oh wait, we got our line for our shift, going to the transmission, and then we also have PCV. So there you go, one old quadrajet like that. So. You've done well, however, it's time for a replacement. Now, I did have a subscriber, John, that is, we've been 
texting back and forth. He's working on a motorhome of his own, uh, and he's quite knowledgeable in carburetors as well. So he had a link for me, and he had a somebody that had another carburetor that was going to fit in. Um, however, I was really curious, and maybe it's stupid of me to try something like this, brand new, because uh, the carburetors that he had found, of course, they were a little bit used, nothing wrong with them. However, I really wanted to give Susie some brand new life, and I'm hoping I don't regret it. The next thing we need to install is our Edelbrock plate, because like I was saying earlier, being that this carburetor is a square bore, the new one, uh, versus a spread bore, we needed this plate, and if you were curious, plate number is 2696. Wow, they really package this thing well. So we got more gaskets here, which is a good thing. So I'm going to guess that there's one gasket per side. So we're going to probably get rid of this guy. And then we're going to put, see we've got two different size gaskets. So we've got a spread bore to a square bore. So if you look at the differences, which is what we see down here in the manifold, the Quadrajet had much smaller primaries over the secondaries, whereas a square board, they're all the same. It's going to be good, and looks like it's gonna fit just like that. So that's pretty cool. I've never done this, by the way. So we're all learning together. And by all means, if there's anything I'm doing incorrectly, guys, please feel free to comment. I always like to have fresh new ideas. So this is going to go this way. Probably should put a little bit of Loctite on here, but before I do any of that, I want to make sure... And I've got this set up correctly so that the carburetor is going to bolt up. So I've got the four studs in place. Now there's the, there's these screws as well, and that's starting to make sense now. So these screws are going to go down in here. Got it. Starting to make sense. So we got the studs out like this. And then the screws are going to go over in here somewhere yonder come on get in there go to your home okay we got it. see how it looks because i'm kind of excited you guys getting excited because i'm kind of excited like i said this is going to be the first new component in a while that susie will get so let's see if she fits Wow, doesn't that look fancy? Shiny anyways, so it does fit, so that's how that works. So we're gonna have to, what I'm gonna do is grab a little bit of blue Loctite, and I'm gonna Loctite these studs in place into the uh, adapter plate. And then, how's the throttle situation gonna happen here? So. All right, so here's where we're at now. I found a little bit and I got a couple things done so I put some thread locker on all those studs uh, including the ones that go into these holes right here that hold down the uh, plate to the manifold I don't know why I had a hard time saying that uh, and it's now raining quite hard now and I'm, I'm trying to avoid actually you can see some rain coming in now because I got the hood open uh, I might have to go close that, come to think of it. What I need to do now is I need to figure out how I'm going to set up this throttle plate. The choke is actually going to be quite simple because on the side here, you've got a little pinch point for your cable. And this is right over here. This is what activates your choke. So that's going to be really easy. I'm not, I'm not super concerned about that. Maybe a location for the choke will be more concerning. Probably somewhere yonder. I'm not sure. Um, but the next thing 
that I want to tackle, like I was saying, and I need to figure out how I'm going to do the throttle. Now, the one thing that's kind of silly on this is that if I set this up somewhat where I want it to be, so my plan is to pop out this little rivet, straighten out this plate, because if I do that, I'll be able to drill a hole the same size as these studs, and if I flatten out this plate, I should be able to get this one over here into this stud and then this one over to this side. It'll be nice and solid. It'll be almost factory. The problem is this particular setup right here. So there's a huge hole and that's what it lines up with coincidentally very well. So let's say I just do this just for the sake of arguing here. It's not, it's not perfect, but it lines up pretty close here. So I've got bottle just holding the pedal up so that I know where my uh, slack is going to be in the cable. And even this isn't exactly, you know, it isn't exactly centered in the hole. So i got to figure out something to do there. Um, the only other thing I can do is try and move the cable back into its position here. But then that's also going to affect possibly the springs because the springs are actually going to work out pretty well. From here to here sorry I'm fingers in the way so they're gonna work out well from where they were located back there to there um, now otherwise this thing is just about ready to fire so in reality I could probably turn the key now and see how it runs but I'm afraid that if I do that I am gonna get completely soaked because that fan is now wet and I'm gonna have a whole bunch of water probably spraying into my brand new carburetor so we're gonna have to wait a little bit so let's take this plate into the garage, do a little bit of machining and massaging to see if we can make it fit a little bit better and maybe try and come up with a solution for this. And by the way, if you see these wires and you guys have been watching the channel and following Susie, she now has a backup camera. I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but uh, it's, it's kind of a redneck setup, but it works. I uh, haven't found a good way of hiding those wires not really concerned about it to be quite honest with you because it, it just it's nice to have so anyways so here is the latest development guys um managed to massage this plate nicely so it fits where i wanted it so it's exactly what i thought if i flatten it out it would actually reach both studs if i put that uh pull that other little stud out of the way or the rivet whatever you want to call it and then down below here if i straightened out this particular tang for the springs the springs work as you know they need to so now i've got no binding whatsoever everything works really well my choke still works really well so that's really cool there's like three springs in this whole setup guys i mean i guess you can't be safe enough but uh yeah there's lots of springs making sure that the throttle returns to closed and this is what I'm thinking of. So I put a large bolt in here and what I'm going to end up doing is I think I'm going to machine the end of this bolt so that this rod, or sorry, this cable can end up sliding onto this tip kind of like a rod. Um, is it going to work? Well, I guess we're going to find out. So I've got the bolt uh, in the vise. It's marked to where it needs to be when it comes to thickness. My plan here is I think I'm going to just grind the bolt thinner. I've already measured it with my caliper. I know how far down I need to go, but I'm going to try and do it kind of like elliptically so that it's not perfectly in the center. So that, that way there, if I want to, I'll have some slight adjustment when it comes to cable tension. So let's uh, get some, you know, PPE. Let's put all that on. Let's start grinding and see if it works. If it doesn't work, well, I just ruined the bolt. No big deal. So after about 10-12 minutes of machining, this is what I ended up with. 
it is not perfect. It's actually a little bit off to the side, but it's going to work. Um, I even drilled a hole so I can put a cotter pin in there so the cable doesn't fall out. Um, but it is elliptical like I was hoping. And it's so the plan is that I just find where I want it. I'm going to tighten up the bolt and it's just I'm going to put a cotter pin in through that hole and that's it. So is it a permanent solution? Probably not. I'm going to see if there's maybe something uh, like I don't know online maybe there's a better way of attacking this problem but for now just to see if this works this should do the trick so let's go bolt it up and see if there's anything else we have to do before we you know turn the key all right guys so this is how it looks and actually it turned out really good so i don't have my little uh bottle underneath the pedal anymore because this is the cable slack i have which i think is perfect and if i do hit the gas it works out just nicely so I'm very happy about that we are losing sunlight and I'm down to my last particular light which is starting to get weak so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna end it here for now and I'm gonna meet you guys tomorrow where I get to try and fire it up once things are dry because it is it is raining like crazy outside right now so I can't really do anything much more and when I have better light I'm gonna also tackle this choke which I need to do I need to set up the choke got the fuel set up and then we can put all of it back together see how it starts if it does or maybe this was all a waste of time and it is the next day guys the Sun is shining much nicer than it was yesterday no more rain at least not for a little bit and now where we have left off was installing the troll cable so this is the troll cable that i've picked up uh, i've already kind of determined the location that we talked about earlier thinking right here is going to be nice i checked there's nothing behind here so i'm not going to be intruding any wires or cutting into anything so i'm just going to have to make a hole here and then further up into the firewall then that cable is going to have to loop around around the rad hose here i'm going to follow the dipstick tube right over here and that dipstick tube is for the transmission then it's going to loop back and attach itself to the carb uh, this right here is the linkage to open and close the choke as you can see the problem i'm having and yet again i have to do more modifications i didn't get the cable that i thought i was going to get so this only has a hole on the side and the end of the cable that i have is like a typical like brake cable for like a bicycle and it's not rigid it's a cable um, so some choke cables most choke cables are more of a rigid type and you can bend the tip of this to make it like into a, a Z fitting and it would help make my life a little easier opening closing this I think it'll be fine because if I can figure out a way to make the throttle link up I should be able to figure out a way to make that uh, choke link up so let's get some tools and start poking some holes right, so I've already looked inside and I know that this is the throttle cable and if I go up and out I there's nothing here and I should be able to just run my choke cable right through here all the way around so let's make our hole without damaging anything else Okay, so it's another day. Uh, this is taking longer than I, I, I just been very busy, guys. But we got it done. At least I think I do. So figured out that if I put two washers and I welded those onto the little bracket, and I put a slit in the one when I activate the choke, everything's working the way it should. So there's only one thing left to do, and that's to try and see if she's going to start. So. Here goes nothing. I'm gonna fully choke it. As you know, it's dry as a bone. I can probably put a little bit of fuel in the bowls or whatever, but hopefully my battery's strong enough to, you know, turn it over long enough to get the mechanical fuel pump to do its job. So here it goes. Yep. 
well. I actually didn't think it was going to go, but... <laughs> you know what? I did not tune anything on this. This is straight out of the box. And clearly, the coke is doing its job because it'll start to kill itself off. No choke. I don't think it's ever item like this. And I got my parents to actually see it for the first time too. They, they, they just happened, they're coming in for an unrelated reason, but I said, look at this, Dad. So this is really cool. It runs good. Now, let's see if it takes any gas. Oh, it's still a little cold. This seems pretty good. A little bit clean. You know what? This might just do the trick. I have to admit, the idle is actually pretty good. And since I do have a tack, what are we at? We're about 1300. It's a little high, but I'm gonna see what happens once it's warm and I might just end up adjusting that. That's pretty easy. I'm impressed. First impressions are good. Well, there you have it, guys. First impressions. It's running, it hasn't skipped a beat, it's smooth, idling a little high, and the engine is starting to get warm now, so I may have to tweak that. But I'm gonna end the video here. Really hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, maybe subscribe if you haven't already. And in the next video, we're gonna take Susie for a road trip. We're gonna go for a little ride, see what those first impressions are like, and see if it needs to be jetted a little differently. I don't know. But that'll be all in that video. So again, if you've watched to the end, thank you so much. And we'll see you all in the next video.